10 unexpected events on a driver's test. This is like when you're leaving your high school classroom and the teacher yells over the crowd, hey, pop quiz tomorrow. Maybe, maybe not. Number one, emergency vehicles. If you're in New York City or Los Angeles, emergency vehicles are gonna part, be part of your training every day. But if you're in Climax, Michigan or Effingham, New York, not so much. I like that last one because it sounds like you're cursing pork. Emergency vehicles, make sure you pull over immediately to the right or outside lane. If you're at an intersection, it might be best to just stay stopped. <laughs> but like this young novice driver here where the police officer pulled up behind them to pull over a speeder in front of them, I'm sure that the ride was a lot softer after that and they finally got off over to the shoulder of the road. Try not to panic if you hear emergency vehicles on your driver's test. Take a breath, do what you need to do for the purposes of emergency vehicles on your driver's test. Number two, right on red light. You may have to do this for the purpose of your driver's test, but in the course of training, you may have only done it once or twice. Make sure you come to a complete stop at the correct stop position at the intersection, give way to all other road users, and when the way is clear, then proceed. If it's busy at the intersection, yes, you can wait for the green light. Third unexpected event is yellow lights, and this gives new drivers a lot of grief, especially if you haven't encountered this during your training. Do I stop, do I go? Because if you go through the intersection, and the examiner looks up through the top of the window and the light's red, Unfortunately, that's an automatic fail on your driver's test. For most new drivers with a bit of experience, probably 10 or 20 driving lessons but with your mentor or with, and with your instructor, you're gonna get used to knowing when you can come to a stop and when you have to proceed through the intersection. But this is an unexpected event. So look for all the signs of stale greens, the counters counting down and getting to zero, the flashing hand sign that's telling pedestrians that they can't cross, lots of traffic backed up on the cross streets, no pedestrians in the intersection. These are all clues that's a stale green light and the light could change to yellow. Because as I said, if you're in the intersection and the light turns red, automatic fail. Number three, unexpected event. You have to turn left on a yellow light in the intersection. If you hesitate at all when the light goes yellow and you're not moving forward into the intersection, Unfortunately, that's going to be an automatic fail on a driver's test. And I strongly encourage you, if you have some anxiety about turning left on a yellow light on a driver's test, take at least one lesson with a driving instructor if you're not already taking driver training. This will help you out and give you the correct procedures for turning left on a yellow light at a complex intersection. Unexpected event number four, cold, rain, and weather. And you're gonna have to turn on the defrost to keep the glass clear in the, in the vehicle or turn on the windshield wipers. For the purposes of your driver's test, at minimum, know how to turn on the high-low beam headlights, the windshield wipers, and the defrost because you might have to turn these on. As well, if it's hot in the summertime, you know how to turn on the air conditioning as well because you'll get bonus points with the driving examiner for keeping him or her comfortable during the drive. And just on that note of keeping the examiner comfortable, Make sure you clean your vehicle before you show up for the driver's test, especially in these days of post-COVID. Unexpected event number five, advanced left turning lights. Know that at some intersections, the, there's going to be a specific light for left turning vehicles. And if that light is red, you cannot go because sometimes once the advanced green is over and the light turns to green, as long as you give way to oncoming traffic, you can turn left. But at some intersections, you can't do that. And again, this ties into knowing where school zones are and other particular intersections and highways and those types of things on your driver's test. In other words, knowing what's on your driver's test. And again, one lesson with a driving instructor if you're not already taking driver training is going to help you out with these types of intersections. This video is made possible by the course package, pass your driver's test first time. Because we know that your driver's test is the most stressful day of your life. And without some form of driver training, your chances of passing are less than 50%. As a bonus, we'll include both the defensive and winter driving smart courses. These will make you a safer, smarter driver and reduce your chances of being involved in an accident. Click down in the description there and get full details. Unexpected event number six. Large vehicles, transit buses, school buses, and big trucks that could block your way or slow you down on hills. 
transit buses are not going to stop near intersections. They're going to stop on the other side of the intersection. So know that if you get behind a transit bus, you may have to move out and around the transit buses, especially in residential areas. Know that you got a mirror signal shoulder check and, sit and move over and then mirror signal shoulder check back. I'll put a video down in the description to show you how to do that. Big trucks park and stop to unload, unstrap loads and those types of things. Car carriers that are dropping cars off at uh, auto dealers and whatnot, know that this could be something that you might have to deal with on your driver's test. It's not something you're going to deal with very often, but you are going to deal with obstructions of other vehicles being unpredictable on the roadway. Tip number seven, construction crashes and general road closures. For construction, yes, you can look up on the internet where the construction is, where you live, and where you're gonna be taking your driver's test. Crashes are completely unpredictable, and you might have to deal with that. Road closures, again, you can go on the city website and look that up, which roads are closed in and around your area. Again, this comes back to training and practicing in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test. No, you can't go into the test center during business hours, but you can go in after hours, or you can go in on the weekends and holidays and practice in and around the test center. So you know where construction is and practice at the time when your test is to be successful first time. Tip number eight, pedestrians jaywalking. You need at least one meter, three feet away from pedestrians when you're driving. If pedestrians are jaywalking, simply let off the throttle, let them finish crossing the road. If the pedestrian is coming towards you, you need one and a half lanes of space between you and them. If the pedestrian is going away from you, you need one half lane of space. Tip number nine, cars cutting you off. It's gonna happen, other drivers are gonna do something goofy, they're gonna do something unpredictable. This is part and parcel of driving. Expecting other drivers not to do something goofy is like going to watch your favorite sports team and expecting the other team not to score. It's simply not a reality. Expect it, manage space well around your vehicle, take your foot off the throttle, let them go and have their crash somewhere else, and if you have to, hit the brake, avoid, leave yourself an out. But unfortunately, if the examiner intervenes in your driving, that's an automatic fail on your driver's test. Tip number 10, parallel parking in front of a driveway next to a fire hydrant or between two vehicles. It doesn't happen very often, but every now and again, driving examiners get caught out and they don't have a space for you to parallel park, so they just get you to park in front of a driveway. Try not to get crazy about this, because I've had people come back to me and say, oh, I had to parallel park between two cars. You gotta do it. You gotta just take a breath, say, listen, I can do this, and then do it. Get it in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you get a couple of demerit points, that's fine. But know that sometimes this is gonna happen because driving examiners are going to get caught out on the test and can't find a place for you to parallel park. And if you're in front of somebody's driveway, you're not gonna be there for very long. So just parallel park and pass your driver's test, get your license. Unexpected events, bonus tip crotchety old driving instructors and usually we envision a man but it can be a woman as well they put their pants on one leg at a time and unfortunately they have bad days just like us and they may get in the car and they may bark orders at you and those types of things in the very unfortunate events they may yell at you and i hope that doesn't happen on your driver's test if it does take a breath focus on what you're doing and say i'm gonna pass my driver's test screw you I don't care, I'm gonna pass. And I know that sounds crass, that sounds not very nice, but unfortunately sometimes that's just what you gotta do. Focus on what you're doing, take away the examiner's right to fail you. Good luck in your driver's test, and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day, bye now. Hang on there one sec. The thought of failing your driver's test <laughs> is what keeps you up at night right now. Click the link over here, check out the Smarter Driver course package that guarantees that you will pass your driver's test first time. Click the link and check that out and have a great day. All the best.